a motion to open the Finance Committee for Monday, October 19th at 6.30. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Um, we'll go to the right to the first one because we got an email on it. So uh, move from uh, the agenda, item number one. All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, communication from the Hoyle Guire Works requesting a meeting with the City Council to discuss the um, facility that they were working on, the bonding that we gave. Um, so remove that from the table. Double. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Uh, we did get an email. Dave Conti couldn't make it tonight um, and asked to do it a different night simply because he had another obligation. So, motion yeah. Motion is table. It was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. A motion removed from the table. Item number two. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Uh, order by Councilor Vacant. Order that the City Council is provided with an update on the recently settled cases by the legal department. And Kara is here. Kara, want to come in? Come on down. How are you? Well, there's heat in here. <laughs> just, just gave you a very short list of the the cases that have um, settled. It, it wasn't. 100% sure from the order there was just said um, recently settled. Oh, there's a typo in the letter. But so these are the claims that we've, claims or cases that have been settled uh, since the beginning of this fiscal year um, from our claims account. Linda, uh, yeah. quick question. So is there still enough in this account to deal with other things that you have pending or does this has this used up that account at this um, point? so that so it's the claims account was cut to 25,000 there's been um, I don't have the exact when I added it up before it was about 9,000 that's been used so far and there was there was a couple hundred dollars that had him been expended that were put back in from last year so there's you know 25 minus 9 14 or about 14,000 left okay. so as far as um, you know I can't really speak to it I would if I had to guess I would say that's unlikely to get us very much further I mean we have um, we have a couple of outstanding tort claims that are seeking the maximum for damage from a public way, which is $5,000. Um, so obviously, if those are found to be um, accurate, there's a potential you know, for several larger settlements. Obviously, if there was anything, um, any other kind of case that was a larger amount, you know, there likely wouldn't be enough. But right now, I can't speak to that. And who knows what this winter will bring as far as additional pothole claims. So. So is this the last MCAD claim that we had pending? Uh, we have one. There's one other one pending that has been pending for a very long time that involves a DPW employee um, that is still pending. Okay. And that one actually is... Uh, being handled in conjunction with attorney uh, Kathy Moore, who does our workers' comp cases, because it was part of a workers' comp case, and she's okay. uh, been involved from the beginning. So I believe that that would be the only other MCAD case. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I just had a quick question. On the, um, the claims of the vehicle, um, how does that basically work? If somebody brings in a receipt, because it seems like most of them are like for 500. Is that like a tire? Is it the alignment? Uh, it just right. Seems like a high um, amount. It 
That's exactly when, when we get the claims, obviously the city's self-insured, so we don't have a, a claims adjuster. So the DPW investigates it. And then we um, generally will either, you know, if it's found to be accurate, we'll pay based on the receipts people provide, or if they have, if it's a larger claim, uh, they'll go through their insurance and we may reimburse them for the deductible and then the insurance company may try and subrogate against us. Um, I think those are just, I don't, those two are just coincidental that they were both oh, 500. Fine. They may have been reimbursements for the deductibles, but. Okay, because the other one, it seems like is almost the same thing, a pothole, $437. Right. No, that would be all documented expenses. expenses the $500 ones may have been negotiated if there were um, questions about the documentation they submitted. And um, in fact, I do believe at least one of those was, you know, essentially a settlement for that amount. So that's why they were the even, even number. Okay. I wasn't sure. It just seems like a lot of money for a pothole. I mean, I know there's been claims over the years, but I just didn't know what the amount was. And then... Yeah, I will a, say, in the time I've been here, the amount, like seven years ago when I, or whatever, when I first started, most of the pothole claims were $150, and now you see them, and they're easily three, four, five hundred dollars $500. They're not. They used to be fairly, you know, I fairly thought, yeah. routine and fairly not that expensive, but whatever it is, whether it's vehicles or um, you know the tires and like I said we do our best to own, you know require the documentation and, and make sure the claims are accurate, accurate before we pay anything okay thank and you and we are looking at just one last thing at coming up with a, a clearer policy um, for everyone to be aware of for the um, pothole claims and how they'll be handled and so okay thank you yeah, thank you for coming in tonight and providing this. If I could just ask you to do me a favor, uh, when we have meetings and, and, and specific information like this, if you could just maybe email us a couple of days. Sure, prior. I just found out about this meeting on Friday. Oh, okay. So. Well, we're, we're going to have to work on better notification to you, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure Ryan can hear me. I think it was Friday, but I mean, I usually try to get it in advance and certainly. Yeah, and no, and, and you do, and you do a great job on that, but I just haven't had the opportunity to read through this and, and uh, decipher. Um, so the, from my understanding is the maximum um, uh, claim that a person can have on a public way is $5,000, right? right? And so um, just walk me through it because I know years ago, I think it was Karen Paterni who used to fight these a lot, and she would say that the city would have to be, um, it would have to known that they had a pothole uh, before we would pay it. And so it seems like that's not the case anymore. Anybody that comes up with a receipt, we're paying it? Uh, no, I mean, the DPW will do an investigation and you're, you are correct on the law, and that is um, one part that we want to make, incorporate into a policy and make clear to residents. Um, but that involves working you know, with the DPW to figure out how they're going to keep track of, of notice of potholes. Um, but no, I mean, I, I don't have a list of how many, you know, I just listed the ones that we paid. I didn't include ones that have been denied. Um, the DPW will do an investigation and, you know, determine if the claim is accurate. And then, obviously, we're looking to make sure, you know, all the receipts and the dates and everything match up before anything is paid. I, I just remember a couple of years ago, I was actually heading to a city council meeting coming down Lincoln Street, down near Stop and Shop, and I got into a, a flat tire because of a pothole. And uh, being a city councilor, I, I thought it would be inappropriate to sue the city um, so I, I didn't. I paid for it out of my own pocket. And I know here that there's a person that's, uh, oh, I won't say anymore. My, my next question is, um, I, didn't get any, uh, I didn't get a chance to um, um, look over all these cases, but I, I need to ask you, to, uh, an attorney that we hire, will they need to have professional liability insurance in the state of Massachusetts? If the city hires them? Right. Well... I would assume so. I mean, the city, we're self-insured, so the attorneys that work for the law department don't have, we don't have liability insurance because we work for the government. Uh, most of the attorneys we hire are in private practice, so they would have their own liability right. insurance. Well, you know, let you know that uh, it's my re little research, that a uh, person that gets paid quite a bit who lives in Florida uh, doesn't have any professional liability insurance. His name's Chuck Emma. Um, so I'm not sure if that's something you want to... Uh, uh, well, that would be... I mean, honestly, if, if somebody was sued for malpractice, that's 
their liability. So if you don't have insurance, you're on the hook for it individually as compared to having insurance. So I'm not sure the city would be liable for that unless the city was Well, if I'm out. suing somebody, I'm going to go with the people with the deepest pockets. And I'm sure it's not him. So I'm just telling you that's a precautionary thing. It's just a little FYI. Thank you. Kara, um, on average, what are we paying out? Because you said there's some are approved for like potholes, some are denied. You know, over the last just three years guesstimate, what would be the average that we're paying out for, you know, potholes and those type of claims? Um, I mean, for just potholes where somebody's tire is damaged, now it's probably a couple hundred dollars, three to four. Yeah, per case. But like, right. have you over the course of the last few years, have you seen them spike in a sense? You know. Two years ago, we were paying out about four thousand dollars total for the winter. Oh, the total. Now it's ten. Or um, I mean, I haven't looked. I, you know, the number of claims that we get, I don't think has shifted dramatically. If I had to guess without having looked at it, like I said, I, I would have to guess probably the amount has increased because it seems like the individual claims, you know, for the similar types of things, just tires and damage to your car, have increased. But that's over, you know eight seven or eight years um i don't think there's been any i mean even last winter where it was a particularly obviously <laughs> a rough winter i can't say that there was any exponential increase in pothole claims i think it kind of goes in circles sometimes there'll be more mailbox claims or more pothole claims or so and the last question i have is i know we've we've talked about this time and time again but we're self-insured. We used to have insurance a long time ago. Has that been revisited? Is it cost prohibited still? Um, I don't know if it's been revisited in the time I've been here. It, we never had, as long as I've been here, we haven't had insurance for these types of claims. I was looking through this list here. I see number five. We have alleged in injuries to an individual's dog as a result of being struck by a police vehicle. Um, and we settled that for what, $115? Was the dog on a leash? Um, I don't think the dog, that was the vet bill. I don't believe the dog was on a leash. I would have to file, I would lawyer? have to look. I believe so. Why would we pay for that? Uh, because it was corroborated that the dog was actually hit by a police car. Um, and and frankly, it was of low. Uh, the only person was only looking for the hundred and fifteen dollars for the vet bill. But so we didn't. It was, I mean, so I have a dog. If my dog gets off the leash and hits a car, I could be held liable for the damage to the car, not damage for the, the dog. I don't think there was any damage to the police car. Okay, but there's damage to the dog. But why were we paying that? Because our officer. Uh, the car hit the dog. I, I have the file. I'm happy to dog look at that. Dog was leash. Report. I don't recall. I, I, I'll i get the file if you want the, the answer of whether the dog was on the leash. Okay. I can look and see if it's... No, you can there. email me later. I'm just, I'm, I'm just... Well, I have it with me. It's no, because my wife actually handled a case in our neighborhood um, of a person that their very expensive little lap dog caused an accident, and that person wanted to go after the car person and the car person went after her and won because there's a leash law so seeing something similar to this I mean I, I guess I don't like your answer because it's a low cost I don't want to pay any cost It doesn't state, but in the you know part of obviously settling these claims is a decision that uh, the person also signs a release, um, and it, so they can't pursue any further legal action against the city. I just don't understand what legal action they would have against the city. They could. I mean, anybody can sue us for anything. So. <laughs> I, 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 
guess we're not on the same page. All right, thank you. Anyone else? I'll just make a motion that the order's been complied with. Second. Second. So the motion is the order is complied with. It was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. Thanks. Since the gentleman's here and some of the stuff isn't uh, going to be acted on tonight because no one's here, uh, make a motion to proceed out of order, suspend the rules, take up item 13. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Make a motion to move from the table, item 13, which is a secondhand license for Brad Matthews Jewelry. Uh, move from the table. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Eddie, that microphone right there, or you can come in and sit down. I think that's still on. What would you like me to do? <laughs> Whatever is comfortable to you. Good, how are you? Hit the mic. Hit the button in the Push front. The uh, there's a button to the base of it. Green light. Green light. There we go. There you go. And there we are. We are good. So tell us what you're applying for. First, under, you know, name, address, what you're applying for, oh. and we'll go. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Brad DeMero. I'm the owner of Brad Matthew Jewelers at 2225 Northampton Street here in Holyoke. Um, and I'm actually I'm applying for I believe it would actually be considered like a, a scrap metal or a, uh, I, I can't remember the precise wording of, of the, the name of the. Thank you. Exactly, yeah. yes, yeah. I mean, it's really. Precious metals. Precious, precious, metals. precious metals. Precious metal certificate. Um, we, uh, we, we do a certain degree of, of uh, purchasing over the, over the counter, but it's really more for um, people that are like, say, maybe uh, trading something in, like I'm making something for someone and they're trading in uh, whatever their old stone or mounting and uh, in turn it would either get scrapped or um, uh, dismantled the stones maybe reused or something um, and uh, actually my it was my bank the citizens that uh, that expressed to me that I should have this particular license uh, besides for my business license so uh, unfortunately I, I didn't realize this until this past year past few months um, with regards to the property, I have the notice from the treasurer that all taxes are, are current. That's there. Any questions for him or any? How long have you been in business at this uh, location? Since, uh, since 2006. 2006. And... <clears throat> You're just starting to do the press smells, or you just didn't realize you needed the no, license? No, I've been, been, been doing it for several years. Oh, right. um, so, okay. And, and it was my, like I was mentioned, Citizens Bank had expressed to me that, it's oddly enough, they had mentioned to me that it, where it's, I believe, a state or federal law that you're supposed to have this license, yet 40% of all businesses that actually do this actually have one of these particular licenses. And I believe there's two different uh, variations of this particular license that I applied for. Um, I did not know. Plead ignorance. Well, you're here now. Yep. So. <laughs> it strong armed me. But well, we appreciate you having a business in Holyoke. No, oh, thank you. I, I like Holyoke. Yeah, thank you. I make a motion to approve it. Any other questions before a I'm motion? Or? No? All right, second. so the motion is to approve the license. It was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, so it was approved in finance. What will happen now is it will go to the full city council tomorrow. Okay. If approved by the full board. Um, I think there's a waiting period. I think it's like 10 or 15 days for the clerk's office. Okay. But just call the clerk's office on Wednesday and see what the time frame okay. is, and okay. then you should be okay. Uh, do I need to come to that meeting tomorrow night? No, no. Well, I'll give the report, and, and we'll go okay. from there. Wonderful. Okay? Great. Well, thank, thank you, you for much. coming down. Have a good night, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, you all have a nice night. And thank you once so, again. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, Councillor Bartley is here. Make a motion to take oh, number three off, financial transfer. 
64,000 off the table. All right, second. Second. So it was a financial request of 64,463 from demolition to pay for, and it applies to two different positions. Motion is moved from the table. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Uh, Damien did reach out to us um, saying that he has a conflict and instead of just giving us a letter to explain it, he'd rather come in and, and tell us in detail what is going on. So he said um, he'd table. prefer that we table it so he can come in and discuss it. Okay, so I make a motion to table, table it. All right. Second. So motion is to table. Second. You can't say All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Well, he was saying it at the same time, oh, so I took the second instead. The second. I make a motion and <laughs> take number four off the uh, off the table, which is the MOU between the City of Hoyoke and the Professional Service Union, Public Plus. Works. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? So everyone should have a copy of the memorandum. Yes, sir. Uh, did everyone get a copy from Carol with regards to the full contract? That came in her, that came in her packet, right? I'm just asking, did you receive it? The memorandum came in the full packet, yeah. and by our rules, we asked that, to have a full, asked for. Yeah. to compare the full right. contract. Now, all <coughs> we have before us, because normally there's a financial transfer that comes yeah. with it, we haven't received that yet. Um, Bellamy, Nothing is that coming? Or, or is it just for positions? What? Oh, that's what it is? Oh. Oh, that makes but more sense. Oh, with yep. that new information, I make a motion since Bellamy. Thank you, Bellamy. Thank you. Make Thank a you. motion. I, we table this item as well. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Do we need to, do you know, have you talked to him? Do we need to do this sooner than later? Is this something? No? No, oh, okay. in the email he said he was. If he's not here, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Of the what? It's right there in, in this, these two. <laughs> Let's skip down to, because Bellamy's here, uh, 11 and 12. Make a motion, take, you want to do it as a package? Yeah. I make a motion, same. we take off the table number 11 and number 12 off the table. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Uh, communication from the city auditor. Letter issued by uh, outside auditor regarding fiscal year 2014, and a communication a letter from the same auditor with regards to the financial records for 2014. So everyone's got a copy of those? Yes, sir. This one, I don't have the other one. Third, Is that it? There should be a third. There was a third item on the, related on the yeah, original I agenda. Five. 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 Okay. There are three different we got five. Six, There's one that's five and a seven. It was not, originally it was number six. But okay. I no, I'm talking about the, the packages that we have. Yeah. One should okay. have a five and one should have a seven on it. Five, I don't have a seven. Eleven. See? Seven. seven. Five. I got the five. I'm thinking of the seven. Here. Right, number with 11 and 12, uh, I'll suspend the rules to take item number six up within that package. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? So six, 11 and 12, removed from the table. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, so the first one is from Councilor Bartley, or that in light of the fiscal year 2014 audit uh, received by the, uh, by the city clerk, the city auditor as well as the city independent auditor firm be invited to the finance committee uh, for questions and answers. So first we'll turn it over to Councilor Bartley and then we'll move on to 11 and 12. And Councilor Dardane is here as well. 
Okay, so I, uh, as I said in uh, Full City Council, I filed this order um, because there was a lack of a response that I, uh, from the auditor's department, so I, I, I left a message, and so I, I didn't want to have to come to this, but might, might as well have a conversation uh, on, the, on the public record. So um, now Mr. Uh, Bell and me and I, uh, we, we did confer maybe, I think, four different times on the one day when, when uh, he was kind enough to uh, free up a schedule to call me back. Um, and the conversations were of, of you know, uh, uh, of some small note. Uh, I don't think they're really for public distribution right now, but um, what really kind of triggered this was the uh, city's response I saw to auto result number um, six, where um, relative to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the sewer fund. And in, in the response, it said, it said, the recommendation is currently being reviewed by the city council. So I had no recollection of anything before the city council. Yeah. So um, <laughs> at our last full city council meeting, I, I said to the city council president, is there anything before us? And, and he said, no, there's nothing before us. So this has led to a, 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 nothing official before us. So, so w without going into parliamentary procedure for, for you know, because we all understand it right here, and folks at home pretty pretty much know how how stuff works. We, you know, city councilors have to file an order and go to a committee like the committee is here, and then we we discuss it, debate it, and mo vote on it. Well, we had nothing before us, um, and so now this is such a hot potato. It's it's how do we get it before us? And so then, then when I started, Mr. Chairman, reading the rest of the uh, audit report, I mean, I I. I came up with some other questions, but uh, to myself. So I thought it might be best to have the auditor come down here, m maybe give a Reader's Digest version to the committee. Uh, I have my my questions, but why don't I like to hear from the city auditor to give a Reader's Digest version about about this particular FY14, and just so people home know, this is the audit for the, the period, 12 month period ending June 30th, 2014. So this isn't exactly super current, but. Uh, it, it gives a snapshot of, of uh, the city as best as we can find it from a uh, independent public auditor's perspective. So, with that, uh, I don't know, Bellamy, if you want to, if you want to respond to that, if you want to give us an overview of where we are, and maybe I can ask a few questions and follow up. I would actually love to do that, and I'm prepared so to do. I would just like to start by saying this is the last Brian Smith audit because this was the year that he was the auditor. Um, and I am thrilled to see that it is a very clean audit from our uh, uh, auditing firm. Uh, it's really summarized in the governance letter, and I'm not sure which number that is of yours. But what they say that is basically there are no material misstatements and I believe I put that in the transmittal letter to you. They also say that the uh, city complies with ethics, the city is using the correct accounting, the city is using accurate accounting estimates, this, there has been no fraud identified, there is no, the auditors have had no difficulties doing the audit, um, they found no material restatements of fact, um, so they're quite happy with the procedures that we use the, uh, and the numbers that they have found. They, they identified two areas of concern overall that didn't have to do with our procedures. One, they are not happy that we do not consolidate HG&E into the city's books, which is an issue that I'm hoping you can tell me something about because they've been complaining about that for years and I'm wondering why, they're, why we don't do that other than what I found is HG&E is a different fiscal year, but have you ever talked about this before? Okay, but that's one thing. They, you know, they call, they, call, they call that a, let me find their first letter. Um, they were not happy with that. Um, they, they say they've given an adverse report based on that. And I've looked back at previous audits and every year they say the same thing about this. Um, so I think it's something that we ought to follow up with HG&E on. And, and, because I don't see why we can't, we, we can't do it. And I know if they're on a different fiscal year, from an accounting standpoint, it's easy enough to change your fiscal year. You, it's, you know, it's a pain to do, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other thing they were unhappy about was not obeying the assessor's law, and I believe that's been dealt with since, uh, yep. since they wrote this. So, so I think that, that we have dealt with the two big issues that they were, they were concerned about. Um, that handles
those the so that's basically the governance letter there's the management letter which identifies um, things we need to improve uh, mainly around procedures uh, or things where they think we could do a we're doing okay but we could do a better job and that's the that is the management letter and basically that's what we pay them to do help you know look over our shoulders and see you know where we can do better and we've um, responded to a lot of those concerned concerns in the actual uh, in the management letter because they always give us a draft first we give them responses and they put it all together uh, so most of those responses are, are dedicated here uh, with regard specifically to the the item you brought up Dave I think as we discussed um, I wrote here currently being reviewed by the City Council because as a layman I thought that's what was happening the mayor mentioned this in his transmittal of the budget back in whatever it was May or June and to me that means it's being reviewed by the council I have so I've been educated by Dave since that while the council may be reviewing it informally there's no order before the council um, so it's a legal question and I'm, I'm just an ignorant layman and use use bad bad language in here for which I apologize but I've learned now so <laughs> anyway uh, yeah. uh, no 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 set me free <laughs> So, um, other questions? Uh, okay, so, uh, so just so I'm clear, so you just write the response, and and that's n nobody reviews it. The auditors review it. I mean, uh, your your city response. So you're writing the response for the city. I'm writing a response okay. to the auditors. Okay, as part of my, it's a dialogue with the auditors, so to speak. This way, I look at it. No, I I, I, yeah. I I get it, but I just so you so you you wrote it and so nobody else it says city's response. So I would just yeah. I, would, I would assume the auditor writes the city's response. Yes. Okay. And I did the, do this generally in in collaboration with any department who's you know been singled out in here. I will talk to the department manager, get the get their you know what happened here, and try to summarize it briefly. So so this reflects ideas from all kinds of different departments that they've made comments about. <laughs> Okay, and and um, so so when you when you read the management letter, um, there are uh, how many results in here, Bellamy? I think there's at least there's oh, double digits. Oh, it's about ten or eleven different different yeah, things. Yeah, I, I got twelve. Yeah, okay, right. so uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a just so the committee knows it's it's the rare, the rarest of rare audits, where there's a um, alleged in there is a, a material misstatement. It, it, that is, that is the you know. For I know there's a lot of lawyers in here. Um, if if you know one in five thousand cases that are filed go to court, I mean, that's that's the one in five thousand audit reports where there's a, a a material misstatement in an audit. It's it's so rare it doesn't happen. You, you don't even you don't even note it because it's just. It doesn't happen. And as I said in committee, when, when you have an audit report with one audit result, that, that isn't so good. When you have an audit report with 12 audit results, that's much worse. So I, I wouldn't take any bowels um, for this, and the city shouldn't take any bowels for it. So I, I'm not, I don't want to characterize anyone. I'm just saying that's my perspective as 17 and a half years as an auditor. So. That's just my perspective. That's all it is. Um, so, and, and so Bellamy, when, when I, and I don't really want to get into the sewer fund stuff because we, we've gone over this, I, I, you know, you're, you don't have to apologize for anything. It's just, just a question mark of, of, you know, you laid it out, you didn't understand. Now that's, that's a different story. Uh, I was, I, I thought that somebody probably in, above you would have looked this over. When I see city's response, and this is coming from, from someone other than the mayor's office, um, but that's not the case here. That's just you. No, because basically this is a technical document, and <laughs> most people are what? <laughs> not qualified to look it over. Quite frankly, with you know a lot of this is accounting ease, so to speak. Well, well, that's that's partially true. Um, but when when you see when I see a, I mean I think everyone here is aware of of the uh, of you know when you look at number five, Bellamy I mean, what. Okay, well, that, that's the police details. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, you write in there, 
Um, there's looks like there's uh, over a quarter million dollars in unpaid fees and you write these balances will need to be written off and funded by the city council mm -hmm. so that, and those are the words of our auditor that's what she said to me verbally and that's why I put that in there when we discussed it well right I'm suggesting that 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 that, an, that would need an appropriation that's correct. I'm suggesting that, that should probably have been reviewed by the mayor's office because the, mayor, the mayor's office has to make come to us to request an appropriation no um, well my feeling about this is that at some time, which could, it certainly isn't right now, but it could be a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, when there is sufficient funds, the city will deal with it. The city doesn't have the funds to deal with it now. But let me, okay, let me But let you. me take this quarter of a million dollars and break it into two pieces. I'm thinking that about $75,000 is money that was billed for the month of June that obviously can't be collected in June, so it's an account receivable that will be collected in July. The balance that's hanging over from the past, from the Scott administration, is about $150,000, and that's me, what we can't collect because a lot of the customers are out of business. No, I read that. It's on the report. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask a, a more interesting question. What is your office doing about improving the internal controls that, that led to this? So. So you, you, we see the issue. Well, yeah. They, they, okay, so it's, mm -hmm. it's your office and the mayor's office and the chief of police mm -hmm. who have to come up with, with well, policies and procedures so to, to figure this out. This is not a very complicated thing either. And I'm happy I would to think. answer that. I would, you know, either you know, somebody, hires, some, somebody hires a police. I will oh, be happy to oh, tell oh, great, you. Oh, great, great. So, we so get, the police have put in together a very careful um, uh, process for keeping track of every bill that's issued, the date it's issued, to whom it's issued, and so forth. They update that as, as the collections come in. Um, they have detailed records now of all of these transactions. So that's step one, to make sure we know who owes the money and can go after them. Well, well, well wait a minute. I mean, so, 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 so see, people still owe money then? Well, there's people who are, use this service every month, so it's, it's, a, it's a constant... Right, but I, I thought the whole point was so we won't have receivables that, that get out of hand. So I mean, so uh, people when they when they hire the when they, they they know they're hiring the detail officers. Right. They know what the fee's going to be. Mm -hmm. why, why don't they pay? Why the policy to avoid receivables just have them pay pay for the hours they're going to need. So pay in advance. They pay in advance. I get they haven't put that in because they haven't they haven't done that yet. They're trying to bill them right away, not agree to giving services to people who haven't paid. They're doing various steps like that. Um, but they haven't asked for pay in advance yet, but I can certainly suggest that to them. I, I don't want to tell you what to do or the chief what to do, no, but so I'm suggesting if, if this has been a problem for years, mm -hmm. either right, you pay in advance or, or you don't have a detailed job. Because I agree. I mean, the, the police department, Shut them off. the police, yeah. well, the police officers, um, they're going to get paid whether it's by the, the, the vendor or by the municipality is the way it sounds like here, correct? Yeah, they only get paid if they work the detail, right? Exactly, so they're, they're getting paid. So they don't, they, it's not really incumbent upon them to get the money in advance because they're getting paid regardless. So, so it, would be, it would have been nice to have the, have the control be get the money in advance, hopefully held in trust by you. Police, oh, police department. You know, we can we can bill in advance and say okay. Well, the held in trust by by whoever is the party, the police department, the business office that, that deals with that. That would that would have just been a just been a thought that I would have. I will talk to the police about that. Sure. Stop you right there, because Linda and Kevin had a question with regards to this. So, oh, just to yeah, keep it in the same before we go on to another question. I just yeah. have a, a comment and a question. We went through this very issue a couple years ago and supposedly the system was all cleaned up, everything was all straightened out, all the old money was written off and collected. At the time, we were informed that there is no rule that says the officers have to be paid <coughs> before the city is paid. State law. So, pardon? State, State law. law. State law says you do not have to pay them until you get paid by the bank. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you were agreeing with me or correcting I me. <laughs> no, I, I was just waiting. I'm agreeing, I was, I'm agreeing uh, okay. with you. But you said it's a rule. I'm, I'm, uh, just, okay. I'm just emphasizing that there's a law that says Okay. That. So the simple solution to this problem is that we do not pay the officers until the vendors it. pay us. And as soon as the officers aren't paid two times, they'll never they'll work start with that paying. vendor again. Yeah. Because they're not going to go out there and volunteer for nothing. This is... a too simple to even yeah, that's a great be idea. sitting here having a long conversation about this. So I say just 
keep it simple. Yeah, I and I'll, I'll hold my other questions till we get to the other sections. Um, but my biggest concern is around material weaknesses in cash. And I am stunned to hear that the mayor didn't look at this before it went back to the auditors. When I ran a business and we had outside audits, I knew what was in that report. There wasn't somebody that later said, oh, well, I didn't show it to her. I mean, it, the buck stops at the top seat. And the I mayor- didn't think, I just didn't think to give it to the mayor. I just, you know, to me, this was a conversation between me and the auditors, and so I just wrote it and sent it to them. And they were pressuring me, get it done. We need it by thus and such a day. Well, right, so right, right, but, it. but- It's not my fault. To Councillor Bartley's point, mm -hmm. um, $1.3 million deficit in the budget that's going to be fixed by a recommendation that's supposedly before the council um, is a material. It may not be a material misstatement of fact, mm -hmm. but it is a material item well, Linda, in the audit. Can, just, can I just jump on that point for two seconds? Just the, the first two, the first four audit results in here, I, I mean, I don't know how I missed this, but it says in the, right in the headline, material weakness. Right, and that's my in big the first concern. four. Right, right. It's okay, a, so there is a there's four there's not there's four material weak sections right. of material weakness. Thank but you. But material weakness Sorry. and a material misstatement are quite different. It doesn't say we've misstated anything. We just have some weakness in procedures that we need to address. Well, well, so I just right. want to distinguish between those two things. Well, right, Fair and point. and I also want to distinguish between them because simply because we didn't have a material misstatement of fact doesn't mean we have some very serious material issues in oh, this agreed. audit. Oh, absolutely. And the context in which we're receiving this audit is out of a treasurer's office who said, all the work's getting done here while he was working another job, taking his pay, and- It has nothing to do with that. This is not 2014, it has nothing to do with the- But he said everything in that office was up to snuff, in control, he saved the city, I've heard him quoted as saying. Mm -hmm. So we should not be looking at a list of 12 and issues and for material weaknesses, especially around cash, if that's the case, too. And so I support Councillor Bartley and his comments. This is far from a clean audit, and I am stunned that the mayor would have no knowledge of A, the issues, and B, the responses from the city. Because well, the mayor he, certainly got a copy of it now, so he is aware of it. But he he was just not involved with the response of the city, and that's 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 on me because I didn't consult him. Thank you, Kevin. Just a Kevin, a question and a point. Yeah. Um, how frequently is this audit done? Annually. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Annually. So, um, if you were to look at this annual one, mm -hmm. um, how does this these re noted um, items, these twelve? How does that compare to the one ending for the period fiscal year 13? Because I bet you it's uh, take a stamp and it's a photograph of the of the one from the year before. Uh, some. This is this is this is a rerun movie. I've okay. Um, I've been watching this for a while. Every every okay. S S. Uh, um, so it's a, one two three four. Six are new items that weren't on last year's audit. Um, Which ones did we correct? Um, there were some cash reconciliation items last year. Those were corrected. Now they found some different ones. The controls over receivables remain the same. Uh, the controls over payroll, there's still some issues there. But my point is, so, Melanson and Eve. Right. Um, Melanson and Eve, excuse me. They're starting it's almost like when you go to do a homework assignment, let me get the microphone here because we want to be transparent. Um, when they start their audit, they're opening up with just basically a blueprint of the one from before because of the fact that nothing ever improves. My point is, and this transcends you because you've only been here for a limited period of time. My point is that we had a certain individual as treasurer for five years who these are rerun movies every year after year. So when people, it's not like, oh my God, we haven't had an audit in a decade. And all of a sudden we had this very thorough review. And now all of a sudden, all these things have come to light. This is a rerun movie every year, but nobody ever does anything with them. And these material, especially out of an office, of all offices, the treasurer's office, where we've actually had straight up thefts out of that office, 
people charged with crimes mm -hmm. right. out of that office for stealing, okay? Mm -hmm. And yet, we have serious cash deficiencies. Uh, things that don't reconcile. Some of these accounts, there's some big numbers here, off by 40,000. One of these is off by 200,000. How is your real estate tax receivable account off by 200 grand? Tax lien and foreclosures off by 240. We had another one in an office that this person wasn't charged, but I'm not sure, I don't think this person still works here. But my understanding is um, at one point, representatives of federal law enforcement had to go to casinos to check on people's gaming records to see on certain individuals and some of these same accounts you're looking on here and they're like, wow, still missing. And, and yet these things aren't reconciled. Um, the only thing I'll go in to say about the police one is, first of all, this is a golden oldie. I remember as a counselor approximately 2002, we had to pay $200,000 to reconcile the account because it was uh, over in the 1990s. Okay. So the counselors that have been around here for a while will remember this vote. And so um, for about 12 years or so, we've been told, we got this under control. This won't happen again. Now, here we are, flash ahead a, a decade, yeah, yeah. and we're short another quarter million dollars because nobody, and as a matter of fact, I ask about this question the last three budget hearings in a row, chief, how are we doing on this account? Counselor Jordan, it's under control. We're probably, I think one number was given, you know, we're somewhere around 40 grand, you know, we're, we, you know, we're covering this to cover that. I would, you know, it's like replay the tape. And my point is, this isn't under control. It's not under control. And this audit here proves that it's not under control. Now, the thinking on it has been the law does not require us to pay the officers until we are paid. However, we have felt that that is punitive to the officers and therefore the city has paid these people, notwithstanding getting payment. But all these other internal controls, if you burn us once, we'll never give you business again. We'll have you prepay. We will do, we get lip service on all these things. I wanna see, are any of those things being enforced? We'll have to have the police chief back in and company to discuss all of these things. But once again, the fund is way off. So, you know, as counselors, what should my takeaway from this be is we're paying people large sums of money, police chief, to make sure that their department is run in an effective and efficient manner, and it's not. And so these type of things should just be not in, how, how is this still going on? How is this going on still? And it, we're still seeing auditors picking up on the fact so somebody's not telling the city council the truth because what they're saying is, um, you know, and then you look at the city's response. Let's just see what this is, okay? The police department has spent considerable time analyzing the outside detail fund. I'll agree with that statement, that's true. The results indicate that while there's a large balance of receivables that are considered current, the majority of the fund's deficit stems from outstanding receivables created prior to the current administration. Who cares what the current administration is? Whatever this bill is, is this only about who the current mayor is or administration of what? The police department? The police department, yeah. Um, well, the fact, the, the fact of the matter is, is then those, those accounts, um, I'm not quite sure why it matters who the police chief was if this is still going it's on. It's just the age of the receivable. Well, he's it's so old that it's hard to collect because, as I right. said, some of these companies are going out of Well, business, he's been the police chief since 2011. Yeah, so they're more than five years old. Okay. So all of this, of the 260, what percentage of that is older than five years old? Do we know? I never, so I, this doesn't go on anymore. I didn't calculate that, but um, um, most of the old stuff is very old. I thought they were writing all that off. Well, did you appropriate any money to write it off? That's what it takes to do um, it. That's I'm what trying it to remember. To I think we've had a vote not too long ago on this, but I don't know, I'll have to ask. Well, so three or four years ago, we came in with another piece of change. When they switched finance people in the we police department is when that whole thing got. Yeah, because yeah, I don't know. So we'll have to research that. Okay. okay. 
Given the age of those debts, the probability of collection is slim. I would agree. If they're five years old and they're still not paid, that's true. Those balances will need to be written off and funded by the city council. Check into that for us history-wise. When was the last time I'm we appropriated? To. And give us an account. I want to know who it is. Is it, you know, the Walla Walla Washington, you know, company hired so-and-so and they have this bill and it's so much money. And if you could give us a report that. for yeah. that, that would yeah, be really helpful. Um, and then in the meantime, department will work to ensure current clients, so that's over the last four years, are credit worthy and pay their bills in a timely fashion. So and that's what they're trying to do, not, not give a detail to anyone who doesn't pay, I mean, as we discussed earlier. Yeah. That's what they say is their current policy. Personally, um, I think I like the idea I don't like the idea of not paying the officers until we get paid. I'll be honest with you. I'm biased towards the police. That's if I do a detail, I don't want to wait four years until you get paid. Right. Because, you know, I did the work. I want to get paid. However, the flip side of that is I do like the idea suggested by two of my colleagues, which is prepay. You know, if we should have someone estimating the amount of work, and then we should simply say to them, look it, we've been burned so many times in the past. And by the way, some of these are our own city departments. Okay, that you'll notice when you look at the record as we've checked. And I've had to, like one time I said to the water department, you were down for like 40 or 60 grand. And whoop, all of a sudden that got paid. The school department had a big bill and they, and they paid up, or at least in portion. So um, th this is it. We, we have to ask for these funds in advance, we're sorry. You just don't get the work. That that's it. I you love know. That idea. Um, as far as number six goes with the with the uh, with the sewer piece, I, my only commentary on the city response is this is a problem, and I don't. I want to stay out of the mayoral race and the political political angle on it. But I will say this: just as a person who's very concerned about balancing the budget. A letter came in at the budget hearing, you were present, because I think you were sitting next to the mayor. And when we got the presentation that evening, the first night, as to, you know, this is the plan and this was all talked about with the stormwater fee and, uh, and otherwise, this was the, the plan. And I believe the speech was something to the effect of, look it, we just don't feel it's fair that we just do an across the board sewer rate increase, that the best maneuver is to do a stormwater fee we were clearly left with the impression we were going to get a proposal of some form, whether it's, uh, I mean, we hear the verbally, we hear what it is, you know, $50 a house and X number for businesses and blah, 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 that that was supposed to be coming. That never came. And the concern that we now have about that is at last finance meeting last week, the mayor basically said, well, I guess we're just going to fund it out of free cash. And um, my question on that is, that's a far cry from the statement that was made in May. And I just want to think that through because we already need two and a half million of our free cash to balance the current budget, plus 1.3 now to balance the sewer fund. Yes, because... The total is 3.3. That's the current number, just so you know. Of the two together. Two to us, then something else has shrunk because oh, it could well we, be, we started. I, I keep updating the numbers when okay. I get more information. Okay, very like, good. Like the cherry sheet numbers and all that. Okay. Right? So right okay. now it's at 3.3, the total. Just so With know. the sewer. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, um, so it's not as bad as you think it is. So there's that's good, good news. news. That's good news. I know. News. I thought you'd like that. I am. I am. I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I'll, yeah, that's a good question. So the budget when we left, we got it, uh, I don't see how was $4.1 million. The council cut about a million six out of the budget. Right. So we had this 2.5 number. Then it was going to be that plus the 1.3 for the sewer fund increase of the stormwater fee. But without that, you're saying the number, but there's been changes. Maybe revenues are up from the state or whatever. Well, but now we're at 3.3. Yeah, yes. Okay. So In, including the latest numbers from the state, which are the final numbers from the state. That that, that was a big thing that swung around for a while. Okay. So that that's And I understand the, the budget's based on estimates. In there. Um so, you know, some assumptions about a little bit of growth in okay. residential values. Um 
Um, so it's at, at the moment, the number I'm looking at is 3.3. 3.3, okay. So I, I'm glad that's good news. Th <laughs> yes, that is, because that's that beats, uh, because yes, 2.5, I would I was at 3.8. I mean, so it's like so 2 million for the general fund and 1.3 for the sewer fund. Okay, those, all right, okay, very good. So the your... general fund's doing about a half a million better than my uh, than the in May, so that's good news. Yeah. Okay, so we're at 3.3, and free cash is gonna get certified ballparkish. when do you think? Um, I'm thinking first, second week of November. Okay. Uh, and again, others, why so late this year? Traditionally, that's been September, just so you know. Um, because it took us a long time to close. Okay. Um, because right. I had never closed before. Sure, And sure. because and the auditors advised me to take it slow so that we could get very accurate, uh, accurate numbers, especially from the school system. So if we, you had to estimate at this point a number. I can't. Okay, so there's no draft. There's no draft calculation out there. No, that's the problem. I can't do the calculation. It frustrates the hell out of me. Okay. Because I I've wanted to do it for months, but it starts with a fund balance, and I don't even know where you get that. And then okay. you have all of these, you know, two hundred different funds, and sometimes if they're in deficit, it counts against you, and sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it counts for you. Yep. And only the auditors know all those ins and outs. It's 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 a, okay. a huge frustration for me. Now, the last thing I'm going to say on the sewer fund is this. A statement has been made by a, a high-ranking public official of Holyoke, elected, okay, who's not a member of the city council, so this really narrows it down, has stated that the city council has failed to raise the rates and all this type of stuff. Rates on what? Sewer. So now my point is we, it was anticipated to us that we were going to get this quote unquote proposal that we were going to debate and have a whole long discussion about. I just want that out there that it was known that this is what the council has been waiting for and that, you know, this was what sort of we were going to have a conversation about where we're at. The other piece is we need to get to a solution. I'm surprised it's not mentioned in here about the 700 grand in this shutoff authority issue of the uncollected. It's a big, big deal. We really, really need that. Um, I actually, for counselor's benefit, I have asked the law department to reapproach the topic of, do we even need the special legislation? The reason why is that was the ideal. The ideal was we try to go above and beyond to dot our I's and cross our T's. And so that's why I was fully on board with the special legislation to give us the shutoff authority. Let's be clear, there's nothing that says we can't do it. Okay. And the law department was crafting a legal opinion at one point, and I've asked her to revisit it, that says we already have this authority. So this is the potential next way. The, the special legislation is the best way um, because if in the event somebody were to challenge our authority, this would clearly empower us, okay? So we're a little bit into a dark area. It doesn't say we can't, it doesn't say we can. That's the part I don't like. I always like to have all I's dotted and T's crossed. But if for some reason, uh, for whatever reason, we can't get this taken care of, it just seems so unfair what's going on with the sewer fund today. So. We're going to have to revisit that you know, as, as a way to bring resolution to this issue um, somehow. And then, you know, the whole issue of what we're, where we're at with the contract. So I'll just leave it at that for the sewer fund part now. But I do have questions on other sections, but I'll leave it Dave, for the moment. Back to you. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I... Bill? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Um, well, I, I just had just a few other brief ones. Uh, uh, Bellamy, so thanks for your sure. patience. Uh, the um, just just so the, the public's aware, um, w one of the material weaknesses pointed out in in the in the first result was that the and I guess this is good, I, I suppose, but it, it, we, we never they they tested they tested cash and they found a bank account that we didn't know about and uh, there was forty thousand dollars in it. I so, can explain that if you'd like to know what that was. Sure. That was actually an escrow account holding funds from people who were planning to buy some of the land we sold off and money went into an escrow account. So I, um, 
it wasn't really city money it was escrowed money I think that so that's why it was held in that account um, but that account has subsequently been closed because the money didn't become the city's until they actually closed whose money the, is on it? the financial transaction so it's not the city's money pardon me who, so who? the 40,000 was really the clients money because it was an escrow it wasn't it wasn't hadn't been turned over to the city as a sale yet did it end up in the general fund when you close the account? Where oh, it would it go to the general fund if 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 the if the real estate traction uh, transaction closed, then it goes into the general fund because it's part of the payment. You the said you land. closed this account. I'm saying the, the treasurer's office closed the account. What happened to the forty thousand? It, it well, either became part of a sale or it was given back because the person decided not to buy. Could but anyway, you, the, the account is gone. Could you let us know what happened to those funds? Sure. Just ask the treasurer's office. When they closed the account, where where did the dollars go? Did it end up going back to someone, or did it go into the city? Yeah, because they may the have they, all of the customers may it have could be. Yeah, have completed but, the. Mm -hmm. uh, was there some sort of refund? Is this one one property development? Well, remember there was an auction of like ten or twelve properties. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember how many were sold, but you know, when you buy a property, you put money in escrow until you can until you can complete the legal paperwork and then complete the financial part of the transaction. And for some reason, the treasurer was holder, the holder of the escrow. Usually the lawyer is holder of the escrow. But anyway, that's what that one was. Next. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, the the 60, over 60 bank accounts. Yeah, let, me answer, let me answer that one. Originally, when Mr. Donahue left, there were over 100 accounts. So the treasurer, over time, has whittled that down to over 60. And now they're interest bearing, which they didn't used to be. So. This is part of a continual process of addressing sins of the past. And as Kevin said earlier, they do tend to reappear because it, it takes time to get some of these to the end point. And this is one of them that's, you know, okay, 100, we're down to 60, let's keep going. The auditors say that's, that's still too many. And, and I believe the treasurer says she's still working, working on it and, and making them smaller. Yeah, she did. She's condensed, condensed them since this 60 during the past year. Okay, so that's going to be a, re a recurring theme as we as we read, read these reports going forward. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, one of the I think one of the, the key parts of the of the sewer fund uh, which I didn't see addressed in the city's response, they recommend that the city councils slash sewer commissioners, I'm not sure why it's on us, but um, establish a five-year financial plan. Mm -hmm. So the sewer commissioners are appointed by the mayor. So what 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 are they doing? Are they establishing a, a are they establishing a financial plan that we know of? No, I don't know. Okay, are they aware, well can you make them aware of this recommendation? Yes. I, you know, that's I mean, I think this is all part of this whole discussion of what do we do to get the sewer balance in balance? Oh, okay, well then, you know, when you ask me a question um, on the telephone, you know, will you file X, Y, Z order? And, and I said I wouldn't because, you know, I, I would file an order. You know, and the order was, you know, would, you know, counselor, would, would you file, a, you know, a, a sewer fund fee? Now, well, no, I won't. <laughs> but, but would I would I file a, a an order to um, to have us to have us work out a, work out a financial plan? Y yes, I would. So mm -hmm. if. I, I can keep as generic as, as the next guy, mm -hmm. and we can we can figure it out. But what, you know, the sewer commissioners. That's just what we need. And, and so, are sewer commissioners receive a stipend? Yes. I don't, they I don't, do. I don't know. I have no idea. No idea. Twenty-eight hundred comes to mind, but I could be wrong. Oh. Yeah, who's counting? <laughs> well, Mr. Schmidt's counting, and that's that, that's what and that's what counts. <laughs> that's what counts. So uh, I, 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 I don't want to monopolize it. I, I think I, I appreciate you uh, your answer and sitting here and kind of going going through this. I'll, I'll just I'm done. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So I just want to touch on the sewer fund. Mm -hmm. The mayor initially, through one counselor, had an order filed to essentially double the sewer rates to make it 100% covered for the sewer fund. That was last year. Correct. Right. As it's supposed to be self-sustaining. Correct. And that was what the council balked at in light of all the old receivables. 
I think I'm not positive, but I think well, it was Councillor Lisi, but I'm not positive. Because I can remember getting, a, getting something from the, from the DPW saying, if you raise it 25%, you get this, 50%, you get right. this, Correct. 100%. Right. Correct. So it was, and it, it was a spectrum of opportunities. Okay. And, Correct. Okay. But at a certain point, right. an order came before the council to raise it to the top amount that would make the system <coughs> whole, oh. and it mm -hmm. was a huge oh, yeah, jump it in the rate. It, do so it doubled it, yeah. given the old payables, still undealt with and given that the rate had already gone from one something to five something the council did not have an appetite to do that without doing the other so the council first did the other and i'm really tired of people spinning that to say the council hasn't done anything we've been waiting for almost two years to just get yes so that we can do what we have been trying to do and go after the old bills so that was the context in which the council did not approve this other well, doubling of the rate. Actually, what I remember was the council said, we've done studies of other communities. Our rates are 100% in line with other communities. We don't want to get you know, significantly out of line with other communities, well, that was or people won't move to Holyoke. Two or, things can be true I, at the same time. That's all I remember. So, that's right. what I remember and from back Both then. of those things at and, that time were true. Right. So Correct. subsequent to that, mm -hmm. the next proposal for balancing the sewer fund was to take $700,000 out of the stabilization fund by the mayor that came before the city council, which we denied. Yeah. And then the way to balance the fund that was proposed by the mayor was the stormwater fee. So once that was put on the table as the way to balance the fund, there has been no discussion to my knowledge. The mayor never came back to any councilor and said, We'll go back in for a dollar, go back in for a stepped rate, or through the commissioners at all. And I was at a meeting in Ward 5 last oh, week where one of the sitting commissioners who um, claims to have, and I believe does have experience working in Springfield in this regard, was totally and 100% for the stormwater fee to pay the bills, because we owe the bills. There was no mention made of any um, awareness of a five-year plan or a stepped plan or anything. It was just sort of, this is the answer, and um, bad city council hasn't done its job. And I think, really, what we need to do is all work together to solve the problem. I don't think it is useful or constructive for one branch of the government to be bashing the other branch over addressing a serious financial issue. And so my hope is that we will take a measured response that we will get the tool we need to go after the old money and then do some combination of a stepped rate. I personally thought the letter that you sent about the stepped rate back, Way back then, yeah. then was a reasonable approach, but it never came out of the commissioners in that way. It never came out of the mayor's office in that way to the council. And I think, you know, we're reasonable people trying to find a reasonable solution. Um, but I think, you know, this audit is, again, just stating the facts of the matter, that we haven't done it yet, and we need to do it going forward. I mean, it's supposed to be a self-sustaining account. My personal view is that, you know, we're in a, we're in a tough bind this year because we, we're, we're, we're stuck with the tax levy ceiling so we can't raise taxes and we really don't want to raise fees so yeah i hope and pray every night that free cash is going to solve the problem for this year so that next year when as near as i can tell we're going to we're going to have a lot of of new things going on the tax rolls and the tax levy goes up then then we can have a choice how are we going to raise this money are we going to raise taxes or put on us on a stormwater fee one or the other I actually like a stormwater fee because it's more broad based than taxes. We can get money from the nonprofits of whom there are so many in Holyoke. They can share the burden, which they don't share when we, we put it on the on the tax rolls. So that's my hope, sewer. but I don't know whether it's gonna happen or not. They have to pay their sewer bills. Yeah, right, so they would have to pay their stormwater that's bills irrelevant. too. That is, right. that is a, phony, it's a phony argument. They have to pay their sewer bills. Right, that's sewer. what I'm saying. So if there's a stormwater fee, they'd have to pay them. But they, it, right now, that goes into the in, into the general fund, which me, uh, the free cash, which means it's coming out of the general fund. It's coming out of the taxes. So, anyway. But, 
right now, no matter how you look at it, it's a tax on people not getting a service now, and if you add another fee, then it's a double tax. I mean, we, I don't want to do this whole debate again, no, we're not but do that suffice again. it to say that the people have spoken on this. I will take the opposite this. side and say, right and now you're taxing well, the sewer users because well, they're Bellamy, paying for the roads that the non-sewer users are driving on. So uh, we, let's not have that debate. We know you changed your mind, Bellamy, on well, this from change, December oh, till now. <laughs> no, I just changed my mind on the sewer fee. because Yes, we know. So, but point made, the citizens have spoken. And the discussion that we're having about we have to find some way to get more money in the context of 250,000 missing over here, no, 400,000 no, no. spent over there. What the citizens are telling us is fix the problems. Don't just come to us and give us another fee, another tax, jack up my taxes. What they're saying loudly and clearly is enough's enough. Find another way to fund the government. My budget isn't going up and I'm finding a way to run my house. And if people have not heard that yet, I hope they'll hear it when the voters hit the ballot box because that is the message out there. We're looking at cash, material cash problems in here of hundreds of thousands of dollars. We've been looking at other problematic areas of hundreds of thousands of dollars. The people want these problems fixed. They don't want to get another bill while they keep hearing about these things. Kevin? Yeah, I, I'm just going to add. Um, why the 700,000 piece in this shutoff authority is so vital is I don't think any one of the 15 of us or you or the mayor or anyone can legitimately argue in favor of any increase of any rate at all until we get to a point where everybody's paying. I, here, because here. unless I, we solve that issue, Right. We're all without credibility because here's the, right. here's here's where we circled the drain, and this is when we get. And I've said this loud and clear: if we get to a point where everybody's paying, mm -hmm. and we've controlled cost, which is step two of, of of what I call the of the stool, which is the which is, and I mentioned and reinforced it again last week at finance and with the mayor personally, is the need to hire this consultant to really go through the contract for us so that we can find out you know it's really way above all of us you know this 50 60 grand to hire a consultant to really go through is there any cost to containment that we can do inside the department if we don't do those two steps all of us collectively lack credibility because the people are saying this is ridiculous that the 85 percent are paying more for the 15 that aren't paying has anyone ever explained to you what's causing this lack of payment of the sewer bills? Um, it is, Bill Fuqua believes there's an IRS scam that's going on. I will not publicly tell you what that scam is because I don't want to encourage anyone I've, to do I've it. heard that but argument. I'd be happy to talk to any one of you individually yeah. and tell you what we think is really happening. So call me, send me an email. Well, I'll give the Reader's you. Digest version of that argument, and I, and I have heard that, and I, it, it, it intuitively has a certain sense to it. Yeah. The argument, counselors, if you haven't heard this argument before, is that people elect not to pay it so that they get leaned ultimately on their property taxes against the city so that ultimately they can then write that off as a tax off their taxes when they get hit for, or, or make a payment when they either go to sell their house or otherwise. So um, the, the flip side of that, of course, is they're paying 14% interest. Whatever pecuniary tax implicatory benefit, unless these people are in the 30% tax class, which some of them may be, but I'd be hard pressed to believe people are of that income bracket and they can't pay something as simple as their sewer bill. I think if they pay it right away when the lien is pressed, there's no interest, so they, they get that benefit for the previous year. But be that okay. as it may. Um, never, it, nevertheless, it's not like my, there are a lot of indigent people or businesses out there that are scamming us uh, that are not paying their bills. Right. I think it's a yeah, it's a broader based uh, so um, going on. Yeah, all the more reason to go after them. To your point, exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So, so you know, in thinking about this more, is it's so vital that we fix that problem so because enact local law forty n and you solve it like that. Yeah, we'll see. I, I 
again. Just like that. Yeah, no. We've done that two years ago. Think of the interest we've lost by not being able to collect this. Uh, yeah, right. Well, you, uh, you cost the yeah, city money yeah. by not doing it. Uh, by no, fighting local no. Um, ineffective state representatives not able to pass special acts signed by their mayors and city councils. Um, are the problem we've never we never had this problem in no, previous it's the city council not wanting to pass a state law no, that's out there and available to us well hold, hold, hold on a minute let's not fight this battle let's move on well yeah I, my point is that we need the, the collection problem and 40n is is a is a really bad piece of legislation i have stated as i stated last week I have three primary objections to it. Um, one is that it takes away the bonding authority of the Hoyoke City Council and gives it to a new independent commission. Um, it also removes the authority of the City Council to approve the purchase and sale of city real estate with regard to water and sewer assets. Uh, this is more than a collection. Okay, yeah, right. you're, you're trying to fundamentally power. change it's the checks and balances. It's all about power. It's all about power. It's not about um, what's good for the city. Thank well, you, Todd. I wish you would. <laughs> well, you brought it up. You brought up 40 yen. So I had to. Let, me, let me just ask okay. one question because yes. it's part of the order, uh, and they've been here before. It says to have you in as well as the independent order. Where are they tonight? Uh, I would have been happy to invite them, but I didn't know that they were. I never saw an order. Ryan just called and told me to show up tonight. I don't know that he contacted them or not. Okay, we'll, not, we'll we'll refile it to have them come in because if they, you'd like them to come in, I'm sure they'd be delighted to. And they actually, well, I know we're entitled to it. That's by, that's by law, and that's what's required. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just making that point that we'll have to have them back in here to go over Fine. what they did and then address their findings through their them. Price? Hmm? I think it's included in their price. That yeah, it is. In essence, they were here last time. There was right. three of them here, and I you forgot the gentleman's yeah. name. They're yeah, that was nice. very helpful. Yeah. That I was really. Included in their price. Yeah, I agree. I agree. They're, yeah. they're very. They're a very good no, firm. They, they know very what they're doing. Very, very informative. So that was part of the order. So to be in compliance with your order, we're just going to have to probably refile you know, be, an order. Re refile an order or table this one to have them brought back in oh, we can do that. because they they are not here for whatever reason, whether miscommunication or what have you so I'm just putting that out there are there any other questions Dave do you have any other questions or Linda, <coughs> Kevin anyone Joe a question but just a thought on the the five-year uh, plan that's requested by the auditors it's they always good to have a five-year plan but that plan needs to reflect the the mandate from the federal government as we all know is the separation of storm water into our wastewater treatment plant so that the overflow into the river is eliminated when the storms come and, and or as we have done you know treated after a uh, period of holding which we never could do before but what we did on um, the CSO that we corrected which is the, the largest CO in the city is only a little less than 50 percent of the problem there's still 50 percent of overflow problems out there smaller but total up to 50% like of what we're being mandated to there. do. If we don't get a dollar figure on that, we're just kidding ourselves. Yeah. No, I'm you saying know. it's about $40 million of exposure. But the, the way the auditors wrote this report and the discussion tonight was about the, the, the up-to-date problem, you know, the deficits. That's part of the deficit. And to your point, a five-year plan would look at the bigger, yeah. the bigger problem. Because if we don't, we're just kidding ourselves and the problem's never going to go away. Um, Bellamy, uh, two couple quick points I wanted to ask you. 11 is a is an ongoing standing item about the formal risk assessment process of the city. Yeah. This has appeared in numerous audits. I'm interested to know what you and others uh, that are uh, running the day-to-day -day affairs of the city are doing on this, particularly as it recommends things such as city establish a formal employee fraud policy, also consider a fraud hotline um, to make and... Um, anonymous uh, most companies have that um, and I'm wondering what are we doing in this area nothing that I'm aware of I, have, I haven't discussed this with anyone this has appeared in probably 10 audits no well, has it yeah you, you, your office has copies of all the old oh, yeah, ones I know. I just have, I've, I've read like three of them I haven't I haven't okay. gone back to and I'll bet you it's in all three them. that you probably uh, read um, so anyways this is a this is a to talk to the auditors and find out kind of what's behind this and I haven't done that yet because I'm 
they've been incredibly busy, busy this last quarter, and I don't want to distract them from. And I don't want to distract them from free cash, so I've left them alone on the details of some of these items that I felt we could discuss uh, after they finished the job that I, ha I have currently hired them to do. Uh, and this is one, because I don't know why. When they say they're, they have discovered no fraud, so I don't see why that they're well, bringing this up. Well, Although there has been fraud in the past, I guess. The, what, they're, what they're saying is, I'll give you a good example, at Mercy Medical Center, where I happen to have the, the pleasure of working, uh, we have a fraud hotline uh, or a compliance hotline, if you will. It's a 1-800 number, totally anonymous. You can call if you see things that are either adverse to patient care. You see somebody swiping something. You see things that are dishonest. Um, you can report these things to this, this anonymous hotline, and they investigate these things. And, um, yeah. We've heard, we, this is again my point and only bringing these points up is these are all rerun movies in every audit so I'm just pointing those out just the benefit of some history on these things um, those those things cost very little uh, to do but yeah uh, also uh, you know they're looking at the segregation of duties the P, you know a lot of the different things on uh, a number of these things I think we should really take some of their points to heart the auditors raised the issue about the state had denied a portion of our request for MSBA funds that the city council had been asked to authorize for Dean Tech in the amount of um, approximately $300,000. Um, do you know what the nature of that denial of $300,000 was? I, I think, the, as I recall, the issue is the, the payment for some computers that were bought as part of this, this, okay. this project and whether they were in scope or not in scope for the state funding and so that's what the the, the school is arm wrestling with them over but it's i believe it was the, the purchase of computers for this project okay and this was determined as of an audit work that was done in may 2015 as of five months later do we have any additional information no. on this issue no okay, so we'll have to have the school department school come department in maybe lenny dithering with it all right, um, because I, I don't want a repeat of what happened at Hoyle High School to happen at Dean. Mm -hmm. And we know what happened there, yeah. about an $8 million blunder where we added things on that we didn't put in the original application for $10 million. And then when we did the reauthorization the second time, SBA said, sorry, you get one bite at the apple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We've yeah. talked about that. that. That is awful. And so we lost 80% of funding on the second 10 million. Yeah. Had we put it all in the first package, no problem. Oops. Been there. Yeah. That's a big oops. Nope. And so if the computers are out of scope and we said, eh, just send them over anyways, it's only money, right? Um, we got to make sure that you know folks that are putting these things in know what they're doing. So, anyways, that was the big, that was the bigger stuff. So I'll leave the rest go for the evening. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming down, uh, Bellamy, and uh, for your talk a couple times. I had questions about the the uh, sewer fund and about the uh, audit. Um, you answered them uh, clearly to me. Um, Kevin took the one I, I was going to talk about, but the school funding, and and I know they will have to have the school department in on that. But a lot of this, that's kind of, as Kevin said, a lot of this stuff, it seems that can you just take the year before and check to say, hey, can we take care of this? You know, you get a report card and you say, well, I got a couple Cs. Now I want to get a B or a B plus next time. Um, I don't know how difficult that is um, for. I, do, I mean, actually, I, I've some of the stuff my, can be tough to do. My but page where I did compare last year's audit to this year's and what's what's the same and what's different. And, and there so are some forth. things, yeah, different <laughs> yeah, things come up, up, I'm sure. Five are the same and six or so are different. So, yeah, I know right. I did do that. Yeah, and, and can the can the department say the treasurer, the collector, could they did they actually get this document? And say, okay, no, we got to look at this. No, we're missing this fund or this. No, I, I, those departments thing. that were involved, I sent a copy of the audit and said, you know, I want we need responses on this. Tell me what's going on. I oops, meet with them and get their answers and put that in here. But yeah, they all know that they're on. And I, I think that's notice. important. They all know they're on notice by the uh, external auditors, believe me. And, and what and happens? we're still working on some of these issues. No, I know. I mean, what happens next year if they're still there? That, I mean, nothing really happens to the department or the employees, really, right? And they still got a job. I mean, they have rights, I know, but if you're not performing, what happens? You know, 
you're not doing the job, what's the result? You, there's nothing. Depends you know. on who the department is, who their boss is, whether they whether the boss cares about this or not. Yeah, it's so, almost when you go back to the sewer bill. If, you, if you're not paying the bill, the what happens to you? Yeah, nothing, right? Yeah, they're not paying the bill, so they get a lien on their house, and they yeah. Yeah, there's there's nothing. But nothing. It's called, it's called no consequences. Well, there should be consequences, I believe, you know, on, on a lot of these things. And uh, I just, something that, uh, I, I'm glad you came down and, and explained things to us better. And, and uh, it's something that uh, I think we just have to work on is saying that this is what happened. I know you do that. You checked what happened last year, what happened two years ago. Is some of this stuff getting cleared up or is it just yes, sort of? Yes, no, that's what I said. Some of it is, yeah. There are a lot of things some that, aren't, that yeah. have been cleared up. Yeah, okay. I appreciate it. But, Thank you. you know, new things develop. New things come some up. Some of them, as we said, take take years to Go to clear up. We'll shoot to get them finished, fixed. Okay. okay. Thank you. Linda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to go back to um, the payroll issue, item three. And we spend a lot of time when we're talking about the budget, talking about how 80% of the budget is personnel. Correct. When we have a material weakness in our payroll system, time is money. And when we're not tracking time and we're not checking the pays and we're not taken time off, accrued off the books, that amounts to thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, they haven't quantified that here, but the city council has, for a number of years, tried to get the munis system implemented and used in departments, and there have been, for years, pushback on that very thing to avoid the very accountability that we're sitting here in the room saying we're getting banged in the audit for. I couldn't agree more. The city has bought the system. Mm -hmm. The city council has funded positions. And the administrations have just trashed the accountability. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, we bought it. Let's use it. I would love to use it. And maybe we'll get some um, leadership in the city that will. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. So, can I just, Bellamy, as far as complying with your order with the outside auditors, I, what would you recommend? Would you recommend that the committee kind of move I'm, this forward? I'm happy to call them and invite them, but I wasn't asked to do that, and I never saw a physical order, no, so I, I didn't I'm, know they were. No, no, I, I'm just, I'm hearing you. Just, just on there, you mentioned that they're awfully busy. I mean, we can, we can move this, get this out of committee <coughs> now and, and refile it. Yeah. They'll show up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's so. part of the contract. They will show up and we give them a date. Yeah, yeah. okay. Great. Or yeah. give them two oh. dates. And, yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, Is it possible it's, um, maybe 11 and 12 to be complied with and six we um, table? Well, the issue well, is Dave uh, requested the updated reports, which is really the audit itself. Right. That's what they're going to address when they come in. So okay, so that is part of 11 and 12. To, okay. To okay. Well, okay. Well, yeah, well, well, with all due respect, when, when you know, we received these orders, I, I thought the, uh, the outside auditors would be here. I've been kind of quiet tonight because, with all due respect to Bellamy, I think he's doing a great job. I, I'd rather hear from them. Yeah. It's an independent look that we want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and certainly, they're actually, by listening to Bellamy tonight, I think some department heads should be invited in so they can hear our questions and maybe you know, give some of their versions, too. I think it's a great order by Councillor Bartley, and we should continue with it in committee and take it two steps further. So, Councillor Leahy, has, you said a motion? Yeah, we did. <laughs> motion to table is free. Oh, uh, if before it's seconded, yep, because we can't debate that right. motion, um, I would just like to ask through the chair to our yep. acting auditor um, if, in the response to the audit, it, the language will be changed relative to that. Um, recommendation being reviewed in front of the city council or we can ask the auditors but i don't think they change anything at this point i think it's cast in stone well no no i'm not talking in their financial audit i'm talking in your response your to their but management this is their document that they, they've issued this document not me i gave them the response and they put it together and issued this document yeah. now maybe after they come they'll they'll issue a revision i mean i can ask them but i don't it's it's not my document well, okay. So As submitted to you, it is not my document. So it in terms of the communication that was sent to them relative to that item and what they're, action they're using my words being right. undertaken, um, 
can you communicate to them an update as to how the mayor has determined he actually is going to balance that fund? Huh? Sorry, what does he that said mean? He's going, he said the recommendation for the stormwater fee will not be before the council. He said he's going to use the free cash to balance the fund. Oh, but you, well, that's your decision when you set the tax rate and, and, and balance the budget. That's not his decision. That's your decision. That's why I'm confused. Well, in the cherry sheet and in the budget mm -hmm. is his proposal as to how to balance that fund, which is reflected here, imposing right. a new stormwater fee. Which was communicated back in May, but he makes no further, does he make a further recommendation to you at this point, or do you just get, I don't know, I don't know how the process works. Does he make another recommendation to you? financial transfer. When we, have, when we have free cash? Or do you just take it up? He would have to request the transfer, which is what oh, okay. he stated he will do. Oh, okay. I didn't so, see. I don't know the process. That's so, where I'm confused. Since, so and maybe I'm, he will do that. So why know. I'm asking this of you is because it's stated that it's going to be balanced by a stormwater fee. Oh, and only a stormwater. Yeah. Correct. And that's not even what I meant. I meant that could be an element of balancing it. But Correct. okay. Correct. Got so, it. Now I understand. Yes. I will talk to them about that. Thank you. Okay, so the motion is to table it, all three, because they're grouped as a package, in order to then invite the auditor in, and as Joe said, to invite in the departments in order to address some of this stuff. That's a great idea. So, do that last time. was there a second? Second. I was seconded, so all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Thank you, Bellamy. Okay. Well, Bellamy's not leaving us yet. I'm he's got not number away five. yet. You got to keep listening to me. Sorry. <laughs> so, make a motion to move uh, item agenda number five from the table. Second. All's in favor. All opposed. Uh, communication from the city auditor requesting approval of the establishment of a new revolving fund to house expenses and revenues for two uh, school resource officers requested by the Hooks Public Schools. All right. Turn it over to you, sir. Um, I believe you are aware that for at least several years, the police department has provided a, two off-duty officers on details to provide police coverage at the high school and dean school per, at the request of the school uh, administration. Are you guys, I assume you're, you know about that, but that's not new, new, okay. Um, the current receiver, uh, is not happy with using details because A, he doesn't get 100% coverage because those details are voluntary by the police officer so they're not always filled and B, he doesn't get the same officer all the time at the schools kind of building relationships with the kids. So he has said what he would like to do is fully fund two police officers who's, who will be assigned permanently to these two schools or on shifts or whatever, whatever the, I guess the word is shift as opposed to detail. You want me to stop and you want to ask a question? Oh, okay. Um, so, so right now, there's no money in the budget for that. Um, so the question is, what do we do? We, you know, sure, we could, we could ask the city council for more money in the police department budget to add two officers to the 90 that have been authorized, knowing that, that the school is going to pay for this and it will be offset. But I don't think you're going to want to do that because I, from my standpoint, I think you want to keep the, the sort of public safety officers as a group that you can bu both budget and manage and watch and not, not have that number get, get um, confused with this other function. Another way to do it would be to hire two officers, charge them there, and then when this cash comes in from the schools, put a credit against that account uh, so that it, the officers don't appear. As an auditor, I don't like that because I think that is, um, it's just not transparent, and, and I just don't like that. It, the use of something which I would call expense credits. So the third solution would appear to be, okay, set up a revolving fund all of the payroll costs of the officers would be put in the revolving fund. All the benefits costs would be transferred in from the benefits accounts, and then the money from the school would come in so that that revolving fund always balances to zero. That seems to me like the most reasonable accounting solution to the problem. 
Um, but I'm open to anything. But that was just more, as I was trying to think through what you would like to see, and how it would would best match the the existing budget. So that's ready, for Joe. If we're talking about revolving accounts, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But you took it three steps further, Bellamy, which I don't think we can have a, a full discussion without the receiver and the uh, chief of police here, because we cannot tell the chief of police to assign permanently two people to the schools. To, to the schools, you know, the, the agreement with the schools has been ongoing. Uh, resource officers um, are in a, a key in the schools, and there, there are there are also part time resource officers that go to the elementary levels and that do different things throughout the day, which benefits, I think, both the police department and the, uh, the schools themselves. The revolving fund is, is about money. The schools pay for a certain, per, a certain uh, uh, a person that they need, that they want to see, and, and, and we get that. It comes out of their budget. The benefits don't come out of their budget. We still pick up the benefits. But I'm saying we would transfer those into the we would transfer those into the revolving fund as we transfer, say, the benefits for finished for safer officers into the safer fund when they're paid out of safer grants. We char we charge not only the salaries, but we do make all kinds of transfers of benefits into into fund accounts to make sure that we're paying for 100 percent of people who are doing fund related jobs. That's standard operating procedure. Which is fine, but standard contractual procedure is seniority and the rights of the officers and police officers within the city. So I, I think that goes even deeper into the issues of unemployment, the issues of what happens, what if, what if the schools decide they're not going to fund these positions anymore, we don't have the money in the city side of the budget to fund the positions, and now we start laying people off. Yep. So creating positions is, is a lot different than resolving the pay structure of a revolving fund. I have no problem with a revolving fund, but nothing to guarantee that there'll be two people there. You know, if, if we have the two available officers, the, the schools are willing to pay for them, that's a plus plus. But the chief has to make the priorities of who's available when, and sometimes priorities are a lot higher outside of the schools than within the schools. And, and, and right now, I think we all understand that the, the police uh, budget itself is running a deficit. Uh, the city budget is running a deficit in the area of overtime, especially in terms of the, uh, the amount of police we have and what's happening you know, throughout the fiscal year in terms of being able to make sure we have our, our cars out in the road, we have the adequate staffing levels for the uh, urgent um, situations of, of any crime that comes up that, requ that requires more than those that are on duty. And, and th the chief has to control that, not the receiver. I mean, I, I respect the receiver's request that he wants to see two individuals that will get used to the student population, get yeah. used to the schools, and certainly that will benefit the other uh, schools. But to guarantee them that through a revolving fund just isn't going to happen. Anybody got another solution? Uh, well, what, uh, one of my solutions is um, the fact of how much we spend for busing, $450,000 to bus housing for uh, homeless students, which is awful, but the thing is we have uh, some fantastic schools in the city that these kids can be going to, so we shouldn't have to bus them to Sturbridge and Pittsfield. And also, um, since the city is in receivership, does that mean school choice is now cut off? Are we still going to have to pay uh, a plethora of students to go to different communities? We could be saving $9 million by yeah. keeping these school it's these children the in house, we're paying nine million dollars for kids that um, are uh, they don't have to participate in the school uh, in this receivership program because they're going to uh, other school districts. Uh, so we're looking for you know hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars to pay some resource officers, which I think we should have. Well, I think there's ways of getting that money, and those are the ways we should be focusing on. I mean, right now we have our school is in receivership. Why are we paying out of school district? when um, it's, it's not mandated. I understand special education. A child can't be uh, um, taught one way and you go to a special school. That's fine, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking regular kids going out of, out of school uh, placement for um, school choice. What, what can we do about that? Or is that a question that we need for Dr. Azari? I'd have to ask Reiki about that, not me. Yeah, so I think maybe Ed, we should table this and-, and Add the charter school in. figures to that number too because it's the same like thing. Charter school. schools. That's another question. And they're also talking about increasing the number of charter schools uh, throughout the state as well. So I think this is a conversation that we need to have. I think it could be paid for. I think it, we just have to do some 
uh, creative things. So maybe we should table this and have Dr. Jari come in. Thank you. I think a motion to have this table to have Dr. Jarek come Right. I, I think, and the chief of police. Chief. And the chief, so yes, sir. What the, you know, you're talking two different departments, and what you're going to do for them, they should be here to address it. Might have to right. find a whole new way it. of doing it. I don't know. So the motion is to table it with the request to have the chief and the new superintendent come in. Right. I think it's a good idea. And I agree with it. Yeah. You should have the same people. So yeah. So yeah. all right. in favor? Right. All opposed? So... That is tabled with a request to have those two people come in. Anything else for you, sir? I think that's it for do, you. Do you have a date for another committee meeting that I could uh, talk we'll to the auditors that. about? We'll discuss that after okay. this meeting. Just let me, you'll send me an email. Yeah, I'll send you an email. Okay. All right, so the next item up is not here yet, so we'll give them one more time. We'll go to number eight. So, suspended rules, got order, go to item eight, take it off the table. All so moved. in favor, all opposed. This is Thank you. For 311 High Street. Forms by Ryan will be shut. Order to be taken. So, is that a leave to withdraw? Yeah, I, I guess it would be a leave to withdraw about the president. Okay. We we need it in writing to give leave to withdraw. He's got the email. Okay. He said. As long as we have it in writing. Yep. Okay. Then I'll make a motion to give leave to withdraw without prejudice. Okay. So motion. Okay. All right. So all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? We'll say, please attach email. Next one is, uh, and I think this is just more housekeeping. Number nine, make a motion move from the table. All those in favor, all opposed. Taxi cab license application for Mr. Farah. I'm not even going to try the rest. Um, this one, we took it up. He didn't show up. We took it up again. He didn't show up. So we made a motion to deny without prejudice, and that was passed. But for some reason, it's still in the committee. Okay. So I'm not. Sh and Ryan couldn't tell me if it was actually sent to the clerk's office. So oh. I figured we better take it up again oh. just in case there was a, a glitch. Yeah. So. So motion to deny without prejudice. So we'll do the same thing. Okay. There's a second to that. Second. Motion is deny without prejudice. All those in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Pass to. Um, make a motion move from the table. Uh, item number 10. So moved. All in favor, all Aye. opposed. Aye. Application to keep two pool tables for 637 Summer Street. Um, is there anyone here for 637? Nope. I know it's empty in here, but. I think it should be, yeah, it is, but I think that should be South Summer. Summer or south, summer? South, south summer, oh. south summer. Yeah. It's just typo it's here. Typo um, <laughs> so no one yeah. here. Um, there's no report saying that they couldn't make it. So I'd say table, table it because it's their first time. Table for one meeting. All right. So second. Are these oh. new or we? These are keep. Looks keep. new. Well, keep, keep, yeah. Keep. But does, I don't know, I don't know. doesn't say people? renew. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't. Have it now. Sorry. All right, so the motion is to table and try and follow up with them. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? I'll take a ride down. All right. Sure. All right. 
Free game of pool. Free game of pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to put a few quarters in the machine. Though. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can't collect now. Um, let's see. Number seven, make a motion move for the table. All Number seven, all those in favor, all, all right. opposed. This is for a uh, state homeland security program grant. It's for 2500 Usually, uh, Chief Dietrich is here. Not we sure tabled why. this last week, too? No, this is... Oh. This is just duplicate, so that's done. So I'm not sure why. There's no match in here. Normally he's, as we all know, he's always here and he's fighting for these grants. Um, seeing how the meeting's tomorrow, I can have Ryan follow up with him. There is no match. I've looked it over so far, unless there's another what, page. What does he do with the grant? Well, that's why I, I don't, it doesn't spe specify, Joe. So what I can do is we have options. We can always table it, have him come in. Or are we going to prove it pending, getting information from him? Like, like I said, he's always here yeah. to address his grants. Maybe something came up. It's a, whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, I like your idea about approving it. How much is it? And it's only it? 2500 It's for equipment or supplies or it's something, It's always, right? yeah, it's always yeah. for something, yeah. yeah. I say we should it's approve it. And this is, uh, I'm sorry, what was it for? It's the, well, it's Chief... Dietrich, the auxiliary police. It's the yeah. Homeland Security Program grant yeah, for yeah. 2000 for the different supplies and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's always supplies. Equipment. And there's no match. There's no, no match. No match. I'll make a motion to be approved. Yeah. Second. All right, but I'll, I'll have Ryan follow up. I'm trying to get information where Barry the money's are going. Yeah, yeah, you should give us Barry some detail Nanny. before yeah. tomorrow night. All right. Yeah, so with an update from the this chief. This way you can give a report as to what they're using it for. Or whatever. The motion is to approve. All those in favor? Aye. All Aye. opposed? Free money. Nothing's free. Nothing's free. Somebody's taxes, right? Taxes. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Uh Mr. Uh That's it, right? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Also, um, do you want to meet? Well, with the with regards to the stuff that we table, uh, especially having uh, the outside auditor come in, is there a good date to have them in, or we well, just gotta give them dates. And so whatever you November third. Yeah, no. <laughs> the second. That was a comedian in the group. Uh, but after the third, maybe. Who has their calendar open? I want to hear. October. We're here. Everybody October 19th. So now, you know I had safety meetings on Monday night. I have a fundraiser the 29th, so I can't do that night. <laughs> How about um, if we flip the page to November? Uh, Are you looking at Mondays ninth? or Wednesdays? Wednes yeah. You're looking well, at Mondays? Well, yeah. It's fine with me. How about the 8th? Let's give it's it Sunday. Monday. It's a Sunday. Oh, it's a Sunday. That's Sunday. So, Monday the 9th. So the 9th is one day. Let's do that. Yeah, because that'll be before the next If the auditors can. Okay. Is it government relations? Or maybe the 11th? No. That's no, Veterans that's Day. Holiday. Holiday. Oh, so no. oh, that's a holiday. You're right. Yeah. Veterans Day, yeah. And the 10th is, uh, that's going to be ordinance. Ordinance, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Every what's time. The, what's Thursday the 12th? Is that? 16th is what? It's all right. Wednesdays are no good. Mexican holiday, but we'll be all right. 16th? <laughs> well, I know, I know. I mean, uh, are Wednesdays no good? Is that the issue? Wednesday would well, be Well, that the particular, the 11th is not good because it's uh, That's Veteran's hard. Day. The oh, right, right. After the meeting. After the meeting. All right. Which is, well, well, the 18th, you mean? Either one of those. Yeah. So, so 18th? 18th no. yeah, leave it to the discretion of the chair. Why don't we just say, give them two Wait, choices? So yeah. If Joe comes back with a, if the night, so on the 9th, or the 18th, Joe might, even if right. they have a meeting here on the 9th, we can always either go upstairs or yeah, if, if you want to do that. Don't we have a rule though, no two meetings at the same time? Except for finance and ordinance. I thought that was just that they can they can meet during a city All right, so well, if, Joe, we... if Joe comes back that the 9th is no good, we'll go to the 18th. So. What's the new book look like? <laughs> <laughs> we'll 
we'll figure it out. I'll email everyone. All right. Uh, we'll get back to you on so, that one, Joe. Okay. Right. It'll probably be. So 9 through 18. Okay. All right. So let me solve that mystery. Yes. Give me one second. Or, well, actually, motion was to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's okay. Aye. Somebody's keys are here. That's fine. Well, it's, it's easy to fill in. <laughs> it's a good spot. Re have you ever been lower than eight? If they're... If Todd, take care. Good night. Yep. Oh, what was I gonna? Oh, I remember I was I was gonna ask you something.